laparoscopic hernias for a long time, but is there chances that there, there are even patients that he won't repair laparoscopically? Let's find out. Thanks, Ed. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, present um, what I think will be a little bit interesting because of the side that you chose for me, uh, better suited for open angle hernia repair. Let's see if I can convince you that I passionately believe that there are patient groups where open, it, open repair is actually the best, even though I personally haven't done that. I will tell you the absolute truth, and I'll tell you the reason behind why my mindset is changing to embrace, and it's not just because I'm getting old, the guy, <laughs> but my mindset is changing to embrace the opportunity to improve care to our patients through a, a new way of thinking. I do have disclosures. Our hernia team tries to work with essentially all the hernia uh, companies, but probably the most important disclosure uh, for this talk is the last time I did an open angle hernia repair was almost 20 years ago. And this is the truth. Um, for whatever reason, not that I wasn't willing to, uh, but it's been a long, long time. So probably I'm not the best person to come to if you need an open angle or want an open angle hernia repair. So it's hard for me, if it was a few years ago, to debate this side of the argument because I was a passionate young laparoscopic surgeon uh, who firmly believed this was the best technique. Um, and again, this is part of my mindset change. I think it's a good technique. I think there's a role. Uh, and I obviously have done this quite a bit. But I also think that we need to think about these choices differently than we've been trained to think about. There are a number of open uh, uh, as well as laparoscopic repairs. So this is not about a either or. This is not about open versus lap or just two different procedures. This is really a complex issue with many, many options, and that makes it tough. We have evidence in the literature from highly skilled surgeons who do an open Lichtenstein repair with low recurrence, low complication. We have uh, evidence in the literature of highly skilled surgeons doing plug and patch with low recurrence, low complications. Same with Kugel, same with proline hernia cysts, and there's probably a dozen others that I could list, and we still even have non-mesh open repair. So we're talking about a very complex issue. It's not simple. And I'll get Bob bored some more on this. Uh, if I was debating there's a role for open, well, this is the best quality prospective randomized control level one evidence, high volume study done in our country. And, and I congratulate Bob for this, even though back when I had my other mindset, I was mad. Uh, this was a well done study. I think there's value to it. But to think that the answer is open is better than lap for all primary angle hernia repairs, I think is not the right way to think about this kind of evidence. And it was because in the large outcomes, the recurrence rate uh, was lower in the open group. And when they looked at quality of life, for some uh, classes of, of patients, the quality of life wasn't justified for the laparoscopic approach, although for some it was. Uh, and as we broke it down, and you saw some of this, and this is even broken down further between inexperience and experience and old versus young surgeon, and now I'm an old surgeon, so maybe that's why my thinking is changing. But if you were an old surgeon with over 250 uh, laparoscopic uh, angle hernia pairs, you had a, the lowest recurrence rate. So we're starting to see that our evidence and how we generate it is more complex than the simple idea that a prospective randomized control, control trial will give you one right answer because unfortunately, that thinking is based on reductionist science of the time of the Renaissance. That's Isaac Newton there, and that's an illustration depicting a concept of the scientific me method where if you can control all variables and only test two variables, you can get one right answer. And that works really well for inanimate objects, but when you try to do that in human beings, it doesn't really give you one right answer because traditional research uh, is based on reduction of science. And again, that's not based on human beings, that's based on the level of knowledge at the time, which was essentially the, the world as we understood it from the physical level of inanimate objects. And even the, you can say, well, we're, we're advanced hundreds of years from that, so we should have better professionals, better technologies, but I'll tell you, we, can, we still can't control all variables. Even the, with the best technology and the most highly skilled professionals, we can still have errors and unexpected complications. <laughs> no matter how 
much training we have, no matter how much technology we have, we're going to have errors and complications no matter what we do. But it's not to say our current level of evidence and knowledge and reduction of science principles is bad. It's just it's the level of knowledge that we've had in the past. And that knowledge that's generated from that is a starting point. We've been trained to think that's the end point, the answer to all our questions. It's really a starting point. But we can take that knowledge and we can apply it and begin to find out which groups of patients under which local circumstances, which includes the surgeon technique, if you've not done an open hernia repair in 20 years, that's a factor. Um, but the, the science behind systems and complex adaptive systems is showing us, and other industries have applied this already, is showing us that continuous quality improvement can over time, iteratively, give us some of these answers. So traditional research is based on a, a mechanistic reduction of science model, and it'll never give us one right answer. But in continuous quality improvement, it's a team approach with continuous improvement based on iterative understanding of the processes. And just to go through briefly what that means is first, we have to focus on a group, a definable group of patients and build a diverse team of expertise around that. And you'll see in some of the bubbles some new types of expertise that we don't traditionally have in healthcare. That includes engineers and design experts and managers and things like that. But it's really focusing on the definable uh, processes. This is kind of a messy picture from uh, in our uh, planning room at uh, Halifax, but it's defining those processes and through those steps beginning to define what outcomes measures we think really matter. And it's multiple, multiple prong processes. It's not linear. It looks a little better when you, when you put, clean it up, but it's still multiple prongs. So we're talking about an ingual hernia patient, a patient with an ingual hernia, watchful waiting would be one of the arms, open repairs, possibly multiple open repairs, whatever you're good at doing locally, and laparoscopic repairs. And over time, you can find through the definable outcomes measures how to continuously improve those processes. And I can guarantee you, even though I did all laparoscopic repairs for almost 20 years, some of my patients should have had open repairs if we're looking at the big picture. And this is one of my recurrences. I know I don't know all of them. My most recent one, Bob and I, <laughs> together fixed a couple of years ago. But this patient had a recurrence. I did it laparoscopic. If we had had somebody highly skilled open, maybe this patient wouldn't have had a recurrence. And that uh, I would like to have known because I feel bad when I have a patient with a recurrence. And we don't want to just look at quality measures, traditional medical measures like recurrence, but we want to look at quality, satisfaction, and financial together because what we're really driving for is value. Value to the patient, value to the system, because that's really what we want for our patients. And if we do that and we look for anomalies, look for errors so we can learn from them and go back to the process and improve, then we can get better. So we also, an important part of the team is an objective group led by, in our case, an engineer to look at it not to blame somebody, not to blame the patient or blame me as a surgeon because I had that recurrence, but really to learn how to improve the process. And if that patient should have gone to one of the other surgeons who's a highly skilled in an open technique, then I'm happy to have that patient go down that path so I don't have a recurrence, and so more importantly, not, it's not me, it's so that patient, be patient-centered, doesn't have a recurrence. So I think over time, rather than debating, there's a right answer or a wrong answer, lap is good or open is good, and one has to be, it's either or. It really is and both. But how to find out and both, just as far as definable patient groups, we have to apply clinical quality improvement process rather than traditional reduction of science research. So one, one size doesn't fit all. What we're really looking for is value. And I can tell you there's some subgroup of patients that I did all, all laparoscopic repairs on that should have been done open. I can honestly say that now. I just don't know which subgroup that is. We have some educated guesses. I think certainly um, uh, patient preference is important elderly who can't tolerate general anesthesia. And I will tell you, just so you don't get too scared that I'm considered a, a hernia uh, expert and I've never cut the groin. We've done dozens, if not over 100, groin explorations for chronic groin pain. And I have done a suture repair closure of the groin many, many times over the last few years. So I'm, I kind of lied to you a little bit. But that really wasn't for a hernia repair. It was for a closure after chronic groin exploration. So uh, I hope in the future, Sages, when we have these debates, we'll be using continuous quality improvement process to, to help define patient groups that will do better with open repair versus laparoscopic repair. Thank you very much.